fiery horse with a speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high silver, the Lone Ranger. As faithful Indian companion Toto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fellow. I'm Silver. Oi! Dan Reed, 14-year-old nephew of the Lone Ranger, was riding in the stagecoach to Ori City after visiting with friends some distance away. The stage was a few miles out of Ori City before the only other passenger, a stout, jolly-looking middle-aged man who had slept most of the way in spite of the rough riding, finally yawned and woke. Uh, uh, well, guess I must have been asleep, huh, son? <laughs> yes, sir. You've slept ever since I got on the stage. Well, I can't say as I've been very good company for you, then. Oh, I don't mind, sir. Uh, going far, son? I'm going to Ori City. I have friends waiting there for me. Ori City, eh? What I hear, that's a mighty rough and ready sort of place, isn't it? Well, it is sort of rough, I guess. you got to expect that in these far west frontier towns, I reckon. <laughs> you know, a fat hombre like me has a hard time getting around out here. <laughs> Every time I go to get on a horse, the poor critter looks around at me and it sort of gives up. <laughs> oh, golly. Yes, sir. When I get into one of those there western saddles, I sort of flow all around it like a hen sitting on an egg. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh, you aren't that fat, sir. <laughs> well, I'm fat enough, son. Oh, why, when I got on this stage, it took two men to squeeze me through the door of the coach. <laughs> I sure hope they don't have to take the coach apart to get me off. <laughs> my, name, my name's Tom Slater. What's yours? Dan Reed, sir. Yeah, good name. I like it. Like you too, Daniel. Well, thank you, Mr. Slater. Always did like boys. It was nice and polite to their elders. My sister Miranda has a boy. Must be about 20 now. She has a small ranch outside of Ori City. She's a widow named Sellers. You know the place? No, sir. I didn't think you would. Just a small place. Her son, Jim, got himself a job of some kind over in Pecos. Pecos isn't very far west of Ori City. It can't be too far, because Jim goes home quite often. Seems to make a lot of money, too, she said in her letter. Asked me to come out to visit for a week or two. I come from Dallas. Oh, I've been there. Yeah, up and coming place, Dallas. <laughs> You'll have to come out and see us, Daniel. Miranda wrote that Jim would come to see me while I'm there. He'd probably come out tomorrow, knowing I'm expected. Oh, that's nice. Got a horse? Oh, yes, sir. I have a fine horse named Victor. Good, good. You ride him out to the seller's place tomorrow and meet Jim and Miranda. <laughs> You'll like him. All right, sir. I'd like to. 
I guess I can find out where the ranch is if I... Great day. What's going on? Can you see? Well, golly, some horsemen are coming. They look like outlaws. Outlaws? Holy gravy and always there. Oh, 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 oh. Here they come. They're all wearing handkerchiefs over their faces. Hey, don't be scared, Daniel. Just let me do the talking. Hey, you up on the boat. Cut out that money box. Hurry up. Yeah, sure, sure. Right away, mister. <laughs> Seems to be three of them. Yes, there are. Hey, Jack, get off your front and help Bill with that box. Sure thing, Turk. Golly, that must be Turk Banner and his men. You know him? Oh, no, sir. He leads a gang of outlaws. I can't catch up with him. Now take a look in the coach. Here he comes, Mr. Slater. You just sit tight, Daniel. All right, in there, climb out it. Choking catfish. Don't tell me all that's just one hombre sitting there. <laughs> yeah, I reckon it is, mister. Tom Slater, fattest hombre in Dallas, that's me. As for climbing out, if you hombres want to take the time to pry me out of this coach, it's all right with me. <laughs> hey, Bill, come here. <laughs> Look inside there. Where's the kid? Holy cow. What is it? If I was worth my weight in gold, I might pass for the United States Mint, huh, Daniel? <laughs> <laughs> I got to hand it to you, mister. You... Hey, now you're taking our minds off our business. It's a hold-up. Now, look, fatty. You can sit where you are, you and the button. But hand out your money and valuables prana, both of you. Uh, uh, here's my wallet. And, and my watch. It, it isn't gold, but it, it runs if you shake it now, man. Uh, keep the watch. We don't want that. I'll take the wallet. And that ring you're wearing, too. Oh, that. I was hoping you'd miss that. Not this worth much, mind you, but it's kind of hard to get off. <laughs> My fingers got fatter since I bought it. <laughs> there, there, managed it, yeah. <laughs> it almost wear for a belt. Come on, Turk. That big walrus hasn't got anything else worth taking. I ought to search the kid's pockets, though, just in case. The funny he... thing, last time I went through Junior's pockets, I got nipped by a small snake. <laughs> He has the darndest habit. You habitat. mean he puts toads and snakes and such in his pockets? Well, you know, mister, the saying is boys will be boys. I remember one oh, thing. shut up. Come on, Bill, let's get going. All right, driver, get that stage. Get going. Get up there. Get up there. You see, Dale being so fat has his compensations. We sure fooled him that time. Golly, but, but they took your wallet in the ring. Yeah, the, the ring, I'm sorry about, but most of my money isn't in the wallet. You see, I'm sitting on it. <laughs> we sure fooled him that time. <laughs> After arriving at Ori City, Dan Reed went to the livery stable where he had left his beautiful stallion, Victor. Riding into the hills outside of town, he soon arrived at the Lone Ranger's camp. Dan lost no time in telling the Lone Ranger and Tonto about the holdup. So it was Turk Banner and his men who held up the stage, huh, Dan? Yes, sir, I'm sure it was. One of the men kept calling him Turk. Met him all right. The driver went right to the sheriff to report the holdup, and Mr. Slater went along with him. (laughs) Mr. Slater seems to be quite jolly. (laughs) Oh, golly, he's sure funny in the things he says. Seems to be smart, too. (laughs) He saved you from being robbed by hinting that you carried toads and small snakes (laughs) in your pockets. (laughs) Isn't that right? Him think plenty quick to fool outlaws. (laughs) It uh, doesn't seem possible he's as stout as you say, Dan. Oh, you ought to get a look at him, and then you'd see for yourself, sir. I appreciate his kindness to you. Ah. He was awfully nice. I'm going out to see him tomorrow at the Sellers' place uh, to meet Mrs. Sellers and her son, Jim. Sellers' place? Oh, that's a small ranch a few miles up the trail from here, Tonto. That's right. I I was going to ask if you knew where it is. You know, I I noticed one thing while Mr. Slater was talking to the outlaws. Oh, what was that, Dan? The one they called Jack sat on his horse waiting. I noticed his boots were covered with a strange-looking red-colored clay. Really? Uh Uh-huh. And when Turk and the other one walked away from the coach, their boots had the same stuff on them. And it was on the horse's hoofs, too. Well, Dan, keep eyes open. Him see plenty. Yes. Tonto, you know of any place where there's clay like that? No. No, me not know, Kimasabi. We could find out. Might be our chance to round up the Turk Banner gang. That right. We'll inquire around town about it. All right, come on. It's time to have some supper. The 
following day, Tonto made discreet inquiries around town, but no one seemed to know about the location of the red-colored clay. That afternoon, Dan left the camp and rode to the seller's ranch. He reined up in front of the house. Oh, oh Victor. Oh, boy. Steady, fellas. <laughs> Golly, there's Mr. Slater sitting on the porch. Hello there, Daniel. Come on up and sit. Hello, Mr. Slater. There's the horse I told you about. Gosh, Daniel, he's sure a dandy. You sit down, sit down. Uh, thanks. Miranda! Miranda! What is it, Tom? Give me a minute. <laughs> Here's that boy I was telling you about, Miranda. Meet Daniel Reed. How do you do, Mrs. Sellers? Well, I do declare. So this is the boy who was in the holdout with you. That's right. <laughs> Daniel never winked an eye either. Got a lot of gumption for a button his size. <laughs> Tom was telling me about how he fooled those outlaws, Dan. Being so fat, he gets away with a lot other men couldn't. Uh, don't you care if people say you're fat, Mr. Slater? <laughs> <laughs> Daniel, the truth never hurt anyone. Especially when it's something everybody can see and you can't deny. <laughs> uh, where's Jim, Randy? Jim's around back saddling his horse. He says he has business in town for a spell this afternoon. Well, I don't want him to get away without meeting Dan. Hey, you like Jim, Daniel. Fine lad. Yes, sir. He's just as lean and slim as you are, almost. Not much slater in him, I reckon. <laughs> Jim's riding around now. There he is. Jim! Oh, Jim! Oh, oh. Hey, get off that bronc. Come up here a minute, Jim. I want you to meet a friend of mine. All right, Uncle Tom. Easy, boy. Jim, shake hands with Daniel Reed. He come in on the stage with me yesterday. Howdy, Dan. Glad to know you. Same here, Jim. I, I've heard a lot about you. <laughs> Uncle Tom gets most of his exercise talking, seems like. <laughs> <laughs> now, Jim, don't talk about your uncle that way. <laughs> I reckon he hit the nail on the head at that. <laughs> <laughs> I guess it's a good thing you can't talk like you do, Mr. Slater. Yesterday, when the stage was held up, you... What are you staring at, Daniel? Oh, oh nothing. I, <laughs> I guess you were looking at my dirty boots. I didn't get a chance to wipe them off. Well, I get my boots dirty, too, sometimes. Yeah, boots don't look right till they get dirty, I always say. Uh, uh, I'm afraid I'll have to leave now, Mr. Slater. I'm sure glad to have met all of you. Oh, do you really have to go, Dan? I was hoping you'd have some supper with us. Thanks, but uh, I really have to go. I'll, I'll come back sometime soon. Glad I met you, Dan. Goodbye. Goodbye. So long, Dan. You come back before I leave here. Uh, all right, Mr. Slater. Goodbye. Goodbye, Goodbye. Oh, Dan. Steady, boy. Easy, Victor. Come on, Victor. Dan rode to the trail outside the entrance to the seller's ranch. He rode into a thick clump of trees nearby and reined up. Ho, oh, oh, ho, Victor, ho, oh, boy, ho. Oh. Golly, Jim has clay on his boots just like the kind the outlaws had on theirs. Well, I'll wait and follow him, Victor. Within a short time, Jim rode from the ranch and started up the trail. When Dan decided it was safe enough, he started after Jim. Come on, Victor. For some distance, Dan trailed Jim without being seen. Finally, Jim rode through a pass into a hidden valley beyond. Though Jim was no longer in sight, Dan rode toward the pass with hopes that Jim was riding to the outlaw camp. As Dan approached the pass, he slowed Victor's pace. Easy, Victor, easy, boy. He was about to enter the pass when suddenly a shot rang out. <laughs> the curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes... Please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
to continue our story. As Dan lay unmoving at Victor's feet, two horsemen came out of hiding and rode over to him. Hey, for the love of Pete, look here. It's only a kid. Kid? Wonder why he was followed. Hey, this is the kid that was on the stage yesterday with that fat hombre. You sure? Sure, I'm sure. See if he's hurt bad. Hey, look, there's where the bullet hit him. It just creased his temple a bit. Oh. Oh. oh, what happened? He'll be all right, kid. He got creased by a bullet. Lucky you weren't killed. Maybe he should have been. Had no business trailing Jim. Here, tie this handkerchief around his head. Sure. Jim. Jim Sellers. Now I remember. I was following him. He must be an outlaw with Turk Banner's gang. There you are, kid. That'll hold you. Listen, Jack. Did you hear what he just said? He's wise to the fact that Jim's with us. Yeah. We better take the young maverick to Turk. I'll say we better. And Turk's not going to like having this fresh kid knowing so much. Come on, get up, Martin. <clears throat> I'm all right now. And get on your horse and get going with us. Turk Banner will take care of you and good. All right. Steady, boy. Steady, fellow. Come on, Jack. All right. <clears throat> Let's go. All right, kid. Get going. Through that pass over there. And this gun says you don't pull any tricks. I'm going. Come on, Victor. Get up. Get up there. After darkness had fallen, the Lone Ranger became anxious about Dan. A bright full moon lit up the countryside so that he and Toto could see for some distance down the trail, which they watched anxiously. Finally, the Lone Ranger spoke. Toto, I'm worried about Dan. The cellar's place isn't far from here. He should have been back long ago. Isn't that right? We'll ride over to the cellar's place and ask about Dan. I'll be relieved if we find he's still there. It not take us long to get there. I know. We'll go right now. Here, sir. Come, Scout. Easy, Scout. Easy, Easy fella. Come on, sir. Get up, Scout. A short time later, the Lone Ranger and Tonto reined up in front of the cellar's ranch house. Oh, sir. Oh, sir. No, sir. Wait here, Tonto. Uh-huh. You wait. Well, what can I... <gasps> Sakes alive. A masked man. An outlaw. Forget the mask, Mrs. Sellers. I'm not an outlaw. Is Mr. Slater here? Well, yes, he What's is. What's all the but... flavor about, Miranda? Uh... Why don't you... Holy gravy. <laughs> I didn't expect to be held up every day of my visit. I don't have to ask if you're Tom Slater... Dan told me about you yesterday. You mean Dan will read? Don't tell me he hangs the up. The mask doesn't matter. I'm a friend of Dan's and I'm worried about him. Was he here today to see you? Yes, he was here this afternoon. That's right. Little scalawag didn't stay more than five minutes at the most. Well, that's strange. Why did he leave so soon? I don't reckon I can tell you that. Seems like he was sitting there in the porch relaxing and talking and all of a sudden up he gets and takes himself off. Oh, I hope nothing's happened to him. So do I. Do you have any idea why he left so suddenly? Nope. <laughs> For a minute this afternoon, I got to thinking Daniel was so persnickety that when he saw all that reddish-looking stuff on Jim's boots, he didn't want to mix with such careless folk. <laughs> Seriously, though, I don't uh, know why. Just a minute, Mr. Slater. You mentioned the reddish mud or clay on somebody's boots. Oh, he was talking about Jim, my son. He's careless about such things. I see. Oh, uh, is he home? No. He was just getting ready to go to town when Dan came. Yep. Dan will stare at Jim's boots a minute and then excuse himself and lit out. Jim left right after. I'd hate to have anything happen to Dan. Sort of got a liking for the lad. Yes, I have too. Well, thank you for talking to me. I'll see you again sometime. <laughs> yeah, sure. If you're a friend of Dan's, come on around any time. Mask and all. Oh, thanks. Goodbye. 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 You find out anything, Kimasabi? Yes, Toto. Something very strange. Dan noticed reddish-colored clay on Jim Seller's boots. Like on Outlaw's boots? That's right. Dan must have planned to follow Jim and rode away from here just ahead of him. That mean Dan go out to trail and wait there, maybe. Yes. We'll ride out there and try to pick up their trail. The moon is plenty bright enough. Come on, Silver. Get him up, Scout. Riding out to the entrance to the cellar's place, the Lone Ranger and Tonto reined to a halt. Oh, 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 Tonto, the only possible hiding place from which to watch anyone coming from the ranch 
We'll be in that grove of trees. Uh, that's right. We go look there? Yes. Come on, Silver. Get him up. Let's go. Oh, now, easy, oh, fella. Easy, fella. Easy, fella. Easy, fella. Look, Kimisabi. Hope prints here. So I see. Somebody stopped here, then rode out that way. Ah. Hope prints not go toward town. That means Jim Sellers didn't go to town as he said he was going to do. Dan must have followed him toward the hills. All right, let's get going, Sidney. Come on, Sidney. Get him up. Come Meantime, the two outlaws had taken Dan through the pass into a narrow valley, the floor of which was composed of a soft reddish clay. Two cabins with a large lean-to behind them to shelter the horses stood off to one side. The smaller and better-looking cabin was the headquarters of Turk Banner, the outlaw leader. The cabin was empty when Bill and Jack took Dan in and tied him up on a cot. It was some time later that Turk Banner arrived after a trip to town and entered the cabin where Bill and Jack were playing cards. <laughs> ah, it beats me, Jack. Oh, hi, Turk. How many times do I have to tell you I'm ready to use your own cabin to... Who's that on the cot? The kid we caught trailing Jim into the past. Yeah, Turk. He's the same button that was with Fatty on the stage yesterday. Uh, I thought that kid looked a little too wise for comfort. Untie his feet and bring him over here. Then go get Jim. I'll get the kid. Jack, go after Jim, will you? Yeah, sure. Guess he's sleeping in the other camp. Oh, still here, son. I get these nuts undone here. There you are, kid. Now you can get to your feet. Come on, Turk wants to talk to you. All right. I'm a little stiff from those cords. Here he is, Turk. Yeah, so I see. You're smarter than I thought, Button. So you trailed Jim out here, huh? Yes, I did. What made you suspect he was coming here? I saw clay on his boots like the clay on yours. Well, what do you know? This kid isn't dumb. Trouble is, he's too smart for his own good. Who did you tell about this clay idea, kid? Nobody. When I noticed Jim's boots, I didn't have time to tell anyone. I just followed him and... Well, then they shot at me and brought me here. Here's Jim, Turk. What do you want, Turk? I was just... Dan Reed, what are you doing here? A little coyote trailed you here because the clay on your boots looked like the clay on ours. He was on the stage we held up yesterday. Holy kid, you shouldn't have done it. I... The Slater and your mother are sure going to be sorry when they find out you're an outlaw. Hold on, Dan. I'm sorry, too. Because I sort of liked you when we first met. You didn't look like you could be like these... Well, like these others. Uh, shut up. Oh! If my hands weren't tied, I bet you wouldn't slap at me like that. <laughs> Listen to him. Talk's tough, huh, Turk? That dirty little spy. I'll take that out Wait of him. Wait a minute, Turk. Don't hit him again. Who says I won't? Why, I'll slap the daylights out of that button. I say so. Wait, what? Hey, get him up and don't move any of you. What the? Put down that gun, Jim. It's suicide. Your you death won't be suicide if you don't do as I say. Get over there in there, Bill Jack. He's gone local. Dan, turn around and back up to me. While I hold this gun on him with one hand, I'll try to untie the cord on your wrist with the other. Golly, I, oh, I'm turned around. As soon as I get you loose, head for the door. Your horse is probably in the lean-to out back. Get him and head for home. There, it's loose. Right. Why, you fool, he won't get past Red out at the pass. He's on guard there. No, he isn't. He's tied up out in the lean-to. What's that? He's bluffing. I don't get this at all. You will. I didn't intend to show my hands so soon. When you started slapping this kid around, I decided to do something about it. You're one against three, Jim. You're a fool sticking your neck out over that kid. Before you go, Dan, go behind Bill and Jack there and take the guns. Be careful. All right. You I'll plug the first one and moves. Yeah. I have them. Here they are. Put them on the table. All right. Good boy. Now beat it and get your horse. But what about you? They'll kill you we if they sure get... sure will, kid. What? Grab right. that gun, Jim. What in places is this? <laughs> Next time, you better be sure you learn how to tie a knot. I saw through the window as I was coming to tell Turk what you'd done. Drop that gun. <laughs> Good work, Red. I saw you sneak open the door. Now, you dirty double-crosser, I'm going to put a bullet right through you. Look out! Ow! My elbow! Well, get him, Turk. Me not think so. Oh, the gun's oh, on the table, right, Dan. Don't move, either of you. The masked man at the window. I'll get those guns. Not good, Dan. Oh. Dan, are you all right? Yes, sir. Oh, 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 oh my elbow. Oh. Well, looks like we got here too late for the fun, Jimmy. 
Say, this mask and brace still holding guns. Reach, mister. Yeah, he's all right, Sheriff. He's all right. I can vouch for him. I'll say he's all right. If it hadn't been for him and the Indian, I'd be a dead duck right now. Now, hold on. What's this all about? Jim, aren't Jim you pulled the gun and made them let me go. <laughs> I guess a little explaining's in order. I didn't suspect Dan would follow Jim out here. Anyway, this will explain a bit. Yeah. Marshall's bad. Yep, from Dallas. Turk Banner's wanted there for a bank robbery six months ago. But I don't quite understand then that. Jim isn't an outlaw? My nephew an outlaw? Of course not. He telegraphed me he had a line on Turk Banner. Had a chance to join his gang for evidence. Jim's a deputy marshal in Pecos. That's right. I got word to the sheriff in Ori City to raid this camp tonight. After Uncle Tom said there was evidence to prove Turk was an outlaw. You can't prove anything against me. Oh, I can't, eh? <laughs> well, that ring you're wearing with all the string wrapped around it to keep it on is the one you stole from me on the stage yesterday. I made sure you saw it after I heard an hombre call you Turk. Why, you... That'll start things against you, Turk. We'll make some of your men talk, too. Just wait and see. Then if Dan hadn't followed you, the gang would still have been captured. Is that right, Jim? No, sir. Good thing Dan brought things to a head and you came when you did. The outlaw red that I brought in from the pass and tied up got loose. It would have got wise and cleared out. <laughs> Dan sure a smart youngster to figure out that clay angle. Well, thanks. I guess you others can handle things now. Adios. Come on, Dan. Hello. Adios, mister. <laughs> who is that man? <laughs> I guess you all wonder who that is. He's the figure of a man I'd like to be. I make two of him in size, but holy gravy, he's got me beat a mile for brains and brawn. <laughs> I knew when I first spotted him that, that he must be the Lone Ranger. Oh, oh, This is a feature of The Lone Ranger Incorporated, created and produced by George W. Trendle, directed by Charles D. Livingston, and edited by Fran Stryker. The part of The Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. Brace Beamer.